MicroSwiss sent me this kit to install on an Ender 3, but I think it'll also be compatible with this Voxlab Aquila. So I'm going to install it and try it out. This is a premium kit that has everything you need to switch your Ender 3 style printer to a direct drive setup. This is the standard hot end holder that comes on an Ender 3, and this is the upgraded one that has a direct drive setup built into it. If we look at the difference between these two hot end mounts, you can see they've got the same three hole pattern for mounting the V-groove wheels, they've got the same two hole pattern for mounting the hot end, and they've got the same two hole pattern for mounting the fan shroud. If we look on the bottom of both of them, they both have these little slots for attaching the x-axis belt. The main difference here is the Micro Swiss Direct Drive has a four hole pattern for attaching a stepper motor and some other features to attach this extruder arm. Also, it looks like this is machined out of a single large billet of aluminum, and the surface finish looks pretty amazing. It's also remarkably light for how big it is. They machined a lot of material out of here. I just finished putting a stepper motor on here and attached the extruder arm, and I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the attention to detail on the design of this thing. For the extruder arm, they used a shoulder bolt here, and that's exactly what you want to use in this type of application. So they have a threaded hole with a counter bore, and that allows this shoulder bolt to go in there, and it forms a really nice mechanical joint. I added some grease in here just to make sure everything's nice and slippery. And when this is all fastened down, you tighten it, and this joint is buttery smooth. I'm using a lower profile NEMA 17 motor, but if you don't have extra stepper motors laying around like me, you can just reuse the extruder motor from your existing setup. It only took about 5-10 to 10 minutes to assemble this whole portion of the build. So I just finished installing my direct drive extruder to the Vox Lab Aquila. And it looks pretty good. I just had to steal the wheels off of the old carriage. But here's where we start running into some compatibility issues. As you can see here, I've got three different hot end fan housings. We've got the one that came on the Voxlab Aquila, I've got one that I pulled off of an Ender 3 V2, and I've got one that I pulled off of an Ender 3 Pro. The hole mounting on this new direct drive carriage is only compatible with the older Ender 3 Pro style. You can see here, these two holes line up and I can bolt this in just like this. If we look at the Ender 3 V2 style housing, I can't plug this in here. If we look at the Voxlab Aquila's original found housing, there's also no way to attach this. So I have a couple options here. I could look on Thingiverse, I'm sure there's someone that's come up with a fan shroud design for this already. But I think I'm just going to use this Ender 3 Pro fan housing. Because it's nice and it'll just bolt right on. I'm going to reuse my heater cartridge and thermistor, so I'll unfasten those now. It took me a while to pull this thermistor out of the heater block. It looks like Voxlab is using some kind of thermal compound to glue this in place. I've had someone in the comments tell me before that you can take two of these 12 volt fans and run them in series on a 24 volt circuit. And while I don't really believe them, I might as well try it out on this project and see what happens. Alright, so here's my final product. The only untested piece of technology is having two of these Noctua fans in series. So if I stop one of these fans, its protection circuit kicks in, and then they both start back up a little later. Let's watch that one more time. So if I stop this one, the other one will ramp up and then they both stop and then they both start back up again so that's pretty cool that that works I also need to adjust my e-steps with the original extruder it was set to 93 steps per millimeter but with this new micro swiss extruder I had to set the e-steps to 138.5 and that mostly has to do with the drive gear being a smaller diameter on the micro swiss extruder I had a compatibility issue over here where the x-axis limit switch wouldn't get pressed. So I fixed that by flipping this limit switch upside down. I also had to bend the switch up a little bit so that it sticks out further. And now it gets pressed by the new parts. This was a little tricky to pull off, but I was able to do it by gnawing away some material up here. And then installing these M3 by 5 spacers so I can put the PCB in upside down. And remove some material from the back of the housing so that this plug will go in nicely. One of the big advantages of the system is hot end compatibility. So if you want to save a little money, you can stick with your stock Ender 3 hot end, or you can upgrade to one of these Dragonfly hot ends that I'll be checking out in another video. This hot end is specifically designed for high flow rates, so it'll unlock really fast printing abilities. I got the Micro Swiss style hot end with this kit, so I just installed that. I'd say it's a pretty nice upgrade over the stock Ender 3 hot end, because it's all metal construction, so you can print at higher temperatures, and it must have a really smooth throat in there because I'm getting really consistent extrusion. I don't have the tension turned up very high on the system, but I haven't had any slipping issues because of how much grip these little gear teeth give you. This gear up here is held captive using a press fit pin. So you can't take this out very easily, 
but the good news is that that stays in place and you don't have to worry about it falling apart and losing some of the pieces. So this just helps make assembly and disassembly easier. So if you're having a jam or some other issue that you need to troubleshoot, it's really easy to see and access everything. So this is an ideal setup in terms of serviceability. I'm resizing my White House and Benchy models so that I can print them on this machine. The only difference in my print settings is going to be I'll have much smaller retracts because without a Bowden setup, you don't need to retract as much. Alright, so we have three White Houses here. All three of them were printed on the Vox Lab Aquila. The first White House was printed with the stock setup, which has a Bowden tube. The second and middle White House was the first one that I printed with the new direct drive setup on there. For this White House, I had my retraction settings set to 0.5 millimeters, which was too low because I had some stringing. On this final White House, I turned up my retraction settings to one millimeter. For the sake of this comparison, I'm just gonna discard the middle White House because I printed it before I had the settings tuned in. These two prints might look pretty similar, but let me hit it with some contrasting green lighting. This really makes defects a lot more visible. So you can see here, there's a bunch of small holes in the prints. When a Bowden type setup starts to lay down a new line of filament, it'll under extrude for the first little bit because you start pushing filament into the Bowden tube and it loads up like a spring before it snaps and then starts printing. If we look over on the direct drive setup, it's missing these small gaps because the extruder has a much more direct connection to the nozzle. It can start printing almost immediately, so you don't end up with those artifacts. Here's another structural deficiency that I found on the Bowden setup. You can see here, I had some under extrusion on my perimeter layers, which makes it so I can just peel this whole layer back. Due to the increased slop and compliance in the Bowden setup's drivetrain, the start and end of your toolpath will show slight errors. When you start extruding, it under extrudes a little bit, and then it picks up to full width, and then it'll stop extruding at the end, and while it's retracting, a little extra plastic seeps out. So you end up with a little bit of over extrusion at the end, and a little bit of under extrusion at the beginning of your toolpath. Now let's imagine that I'm printing two perimeters using a Bowden setup. So that'll look something like this. Since you're under extruding on this part and this part, where they come together there's a little bit of a gap. And that gap is what was causing the delamination between the perimeter layers that I was trying to show on the White House model. Now if you imagine instead of having a Bowden setup, now I've upgraded my machine to have direct drive, I can get rid of some of that under extrusion at startup and then I'll have more consistent extrusion and I won't have that little gap that causes delamination. Now if we look here on the direct drive setup, I have this set up for perfect extrusion. So these perimeter layers have a strong bond and I won't be able to just peel them back like I could on the other print. If we look at another corner of this White House printed on the stock Bowden setup, you can see that I can't peel this edge back. And that shows the problem with Bowden setups, is that it's really difficult to get perfect extrusion all the time. If you tune your printer so that on average you're printing 100% of the volume that you're supposed to, or as I like to call perfect extrusion, then at the beginning of your lines you'll still have under extrusion, and at the end of your lines you'll have over extrusion, so you'll get funky artifacts all over the place. With a direct drive setup, since the extrusion is more consistent, you can get closer to perfect extrusion all the time, and you'll typically come out with much stronger parts. Now the other factor that affects this under extrusion and over extrusion is the amount of static friction that's experienced in the nozzle or the heat break as it's being pushed out. A nozzle and heat break with a nice clean smooth surface on the inside bore will have less static friction and will allow your parts to be stronger. Now when we look inside of these White House models, this is where things get interesting. So I'll show you these benches side by side. On the left we have the stock Bowden setup, and on the right we have the Micro Swiss direct drive setup. And I'll just let you look at these for yourself. Now the benches are switched because we're looking at them from behind. So in my opinion, these both have pretty much the same quality. Where there will be a significant difference is the strength of these two parts. So I'm going to do a Benchy tensile test where I hook both of these together and pull them apart and see which one's stronger. Alright, so I'm laying under the test setup and pulling down until these Benchies break. And I'm probably going to get hit in the face with flying Benchies, so make sure to wear safety glasses when you're doing something like this. May the best Benchy win.
10 pounds, 20, 30, 40. It's overloaded. Okay. I'm just gonna have to approximate it then. Oh! Ooh -hoo. That's fun. Okay, it felt like about 60 pounds it took for that to break. So if you can't tell already, I'm pretty impressed with this design and I'm probably gonna keep it on this machine indefinitely because it's the best direct drive style setup I've found so far for the Ender 3 platform. But that's not to say that there aren't some things that they could improve. Usually Ender 3s are set up to have the wires coming out on the right side. So I had to route these over so I could find an anchor point over here. And this makes for kind of a messy setup. Ideally I'd like all my wires coming out here on the right and then coming out over the top over to the rest of the printer. One of the nice things about this being solid aluminum is that I can drill into it and modify it pretty easily. So I'm thinking I might just drill a little hole right here so that I can add a zip tie which will hold the wires right at this location. And that pretty much sums up my thoughts on the direct drive extruder kit from Micro Swiss. Overall, it's a really clean setup that produces nice and strong prints. And if you have any questions or thoughts about this Micro Swiss direct drive setup, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.